All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about the other types of things that you're going to be doing with your participants. A very important aspect of your group project and something that is very commonly used when you're doing user testing, usability testing, is something called the Think Aloud Protocol. Now, just based on the name, what do you think it means? What are you asking your users to do? To think out loud. So you want them to verbalize what it is that they are thinking about. Sounds pretty simple, right? How many of you have tried it before? Yeah, nobody. Not surprised. Try it, you'll see it's not that easy, especially as it's not. You know, especially we have, tend to think faster than we can talk, right? And especially if we're focused on things, we kind of then start forgetting to talk. We'll be like, oh yeah, and this, uh, hmm. Right, you know, because it grabs our, our attention. So with the Think Aloud protocol, of course, you'll be telling your participants at the beginning of the session about the Think Aloud protocol and what it is, but you will also need to periodically remind them to continue to think out loud. So users are asked to communicate their thought process verbally during the test while they work on each a task. So it's while they are working. They should verbalize things like thought processes and finding the appropriate portion of the screen. They should verbalize what's confusing, what they find is really easy, right? what surprises them, what both surprises them and they like and surprises them and what they find confusing. What questions they may have, because remember a lot of times when we're using a product, we're kind of looking at it, we're trying to figure it out and we have kind of these questions that come up to mind, right? You want them to verbalize that. You don't want to answer them, but you want them to verbalize them. You also, I told you I'd mentioned this several times, especially when it comes to discussing the Think Aloud protocol with them, again, you want to remind them that they can stop the test at any time. Even if they are in the middle of a task. They can either stop a task or they can stop the entire test. So remember that. It's really important. You don't want them to feel like they're stuck. So as a facilitator, you may need to remind your participants to verbalize. You can use a one of, you know, one of these cues that we talked about last class that are you know, kind of neutral. So if they're really quiet, so what, what, you know, what is it that you're thinking about? What are, you, what are you noticing on the screen? Something like that. Very, very neutral. So you must remain totally neutral. Remember that. Open the session with your prepared starting script. Again, I'm, saying, I'm going to say this again. You must read it. Makes your life easier. Makes things the same for all of your participants. Quietly observe. Take notes. And as you're going to see in the video I'm going to show you that's on the, I think it's the next slide, you need to take notes not only on what they say, but yeah, on their body language and what they do and their facial expressions because that can tell you a lot. Things like tone of voice, right? Tone of voice can really tell you a lot. Even let's say tone of voice between is someone joking or not? Are they being sarcastic or not? So you want to make sure that you write those things down. And also sometimes we may not say something, but we may have this look on our face that makes it really clear what we're thinking. Write that down too. Make sure you especially write down any difficulties that they have. Only ask clarifying questions if you need to. Don't forget to look at the timing that you expect. If your user has reached the end and they have not accomplished the task, go ahead and stop them. And importantly, if they get very frustrated, if you see their frustration level is very high, even if you have not reached that time period, you may need to stop them and just have them go on to the next task. You do not want your users getting overly frustrated because that will affect the next task. It will affect their performance. So make sure that they have a copy of your task questionnaire. If it has questions on it also, make sure they fill it out. Make sure they complete their exit questionnaire. And in our class, at least, our debriefing session is pretty much
combined with the exit questionnaire. Sometimes that's not always the case, though. Now, let's look a little bit closer at some of the questions, the clarification questions that you may want to ask in conjunction with the Think Aloud protocol. Because these are things that you're going to need to ask the user during the test. And again, you need to be really neutral. And remember I told you you should make a list of these that you have with you? Really, I strongly recommend you do that. It's going to make your life so much easier than trying to come up with these things at on the top of your head when you're in the middle of running a participant. So you want them to be open-ended and neutral. Remember, just as you don't want your task to lead your user, you do not want your clarification questions to lead, lead your user. What did you mean by that? What did you expect to happen? How would you fix that problem you just experienced? Now, one of the things I do want to mention about this last question, most of the time, you are not going to be asking a question such as that. There's a little bit of risk with that question. But there are occasions if someone is having a particular, particularly hard time and they say something similar to, you know, this is not the way that they're used to doing things, or this is not working the way in working in the way that it should, this question can provide you with some very interesting, rich information. But you do have to use it with caution. But still, notice that it is still very neutral. What should you not do? Provide any information about the tasks aside from the prepared task instructions. I can guarantee you will have at least one participant who's going to ask you how to do the task. What should you say? Yeah, that you should say, you know, that you can't tell them how to do the task. Why? Because you need to know how a user is actually going to be using the product. And when a user is, you know, when most users are using the product, you're not going to be sitting there to tell them what to do. So you need to know what difficulties they're actually having. Do not express any opinions about the software, the test, especially not the user, positive or negative. You want to be very, very neutral. Right, you want to be friendly, you want to be professional. You know, don't say in the middle of the test, oh yeah, nice shoes. Oh yeah, I love that pro program, isn't it awesome? And definitely don't think, make comments like on their hair, especially if there's more than one facilitator and you're whispering to each other. I saw, I saw someone, I actually saw a video where the facilitators were talking to each other in the back and they knew they were being recorded. It's like. What are you thinking? It wasn't in one of these classes, by the way. So make sure, neutral, no opinions. Try not to talk during the test unless you are asking clarifying questions. Why do you think that is? You want to keep it the same? And what do, what do you want your user to be doing? Yeah, you don't want to distract your users unnecessarily. You want them to be on task. Now, this all sounds very obvious, but again, this is one of those things that it is much easier said than done. What I recommend is that you actually do a practice run with someone in your group or someone else in the class. It won't be exactly the same as for a participant, but at least you'll get a feel for what it's like. All right, so let's take a look at <clears throat> sound. All right, so let's take a look at an, an example. Now there's a lot of background noise in this example, but what I like about it is it really shows you the think aloud protocol and some clarifying questions and what he's talking about. So I'm um, on the Wisco sort of home page. I'm in the right place, pay as you go cars, and I'm looking to find some information about pricing. So at the moment I'm looking at these three big blocks, find out more, join up, book a car, and 
this thing that's going across the screen is just annoying me. And I can, I've just looked down here to see what this is about. I can see Brighton's on the list. But I'm probably going to go to find out more to start with. Okay. I mean, actually, to be honest, I could, I'd probably go there just because it's first on the list, but I'd imagine I could probably find out pay. I'd probably find out about uh, costs and going to all of these, but I'll go to this one just because it's first on the list. Okay. When I click on it, I expect to be like a list of like FAQs or something like that, you know, with, with information about WSGO. Okay, so what I'm seeing now is a train, which is a bit weird. Um, and a car. Okay, so that's like a advert or something about how Virgin and WSGO are teaming up. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of information about actually what this thing is here, so I'm now reading here. Oops, what happened? Find some information about price. Find some information. Yeah, let me try to find where we find were. Find some information about pricing. So at the moment I'm find some information about pricing. So at the moment I'm looking at these three big blocks. Find out more, join up, book a car, and this thing that's going across the screen is just annoying me. And I can, I've just looked down here to see what this is about, I can see Brian's on the list. But I'm probably going to go to find out more to start with. Okay. okay. I mean, actually, to be honest, I could, I'd probably go there just because it's first on the list, but I'd imagine I could probably find out, pay you. I'll probably find out about uh, costs from going to all of these, but I'll go to this one just because it's first on the list. Okay. When I click on it, I expect to be like a list of like FAQs or something like that, you know, with, with information about WSGO. <coughs> okay, so what I'm seeing now is a train, which is a bit weird, um, and a car. Okay, so that's like a advert or something about how Virgin and WSGO are teaming up. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of information about actually what this thing is here, so I'm now reading here. <laughs> okay. Did you guys get the idea? Yes? Usually I try to do another minute or so, but I want you to tell me what you noticed about this. What things would you have written down in your notes? So his mindset, what, you know, what are some of the things that he said about how to do things? What else? Yeah, that little scrolling thing was really annoying. What else? Yeah, he saw the train and he didn't, you know, he didn't expect that. He thought it was really weird because this is not about a train, right? It's about renting a car. What else? Yeah, that and that actually is really important. So you saw some of his confusion, not necessarily in just what he said, but he went and he's kind of scratching his head like this. I hope he didn't just have lice. I think he wouldn't have stopped, but you know, you could write that down. So things like, you know, body language, that shows you how body language can be really important. Now, we didn't quite get far enough in the video, but there's actually a point where He's doing the Think Loud protocol, and then he just kind of stops, and he's like staring, and he's like reading. And then he gets this look on his face, and you can just tell from the look on his face that he is so completely lost. So you want to make sure to write down something like that. All right, anything else? Anyone? How about from this side of the room? What else would you write down? What do you think? 
You're not sure? How about just one little thing? What's one more thing that you would write down? I mean, all his criticism seemed negative. So everything he said is kind of important. So yeah, so a lot of what he said is, is negative. Right? A lot of what he said is important, so you're going to be taking notes like crazy. Right? But that also kind of illustrates why you want to do something like your click stream or your progression. Right? So if there's something that he does, so for example, at the beginning he did click the find out more, right? You probably expected that. Then you could just check your click, you know, no, excuse me, check, do your check mark, and then you can just write a note with what he said about it. Does anyone remember what he said about it? He's just clicking it because it's first. All right, you know, he said, you know, I, I can probably find the same information in these others too, but this is first, so I'll click this one. Think it's important? It can be very, very important. So those sorts of things. So you want to make sure that you're recording, that you are taking notes on all those different types of things. Anyone else? Okay, you think you guys got it? You want to watch it again until it stops? Yes? All right. We'll try watching it again. Find some information about pricing. So at the moment I'm looking at these three big blocks. Find out more, join up, book a car. And this thing that's going across the screen is just annoying me. And I can, I've just looked down here to see what this is about. I can see Brian's on the list. But I'm probably going to go to find out more to start with. Okay. okay. I mean, actually, to be honest, I could... I'd probably go there just because it's first on the list, but I would imagine I'd probably find out pay... I'd probably find out about uh, costs from going to all of these, but I'll go to this one just because it's first on the list. Okay. <laughs> I'd click on it, I expect to be like... A, list of like FAQs or something like that, you know, with, with information about Wisco. Okay, so what I'm seeing now is a train, which is a bit weird, um, and a car. Okay, so that's like an advert or something about how Virgin and Wisco are teaming up. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of information about actually what this thing is here, so I'm now reading here. All right, well, I'm not going to try for a fourth time to have it keep going, but the link is in the PowerPoint so you can watch it a little bit more. I do recommend that you go ahead and watch some more of it before you run your participants. You can even practice taking notes. All right, now, one other thing that I am always asked when it comes to recording participants, what are the requirements? It's very simple. You just have to record a participant. The ideal would be where you are recording both the participant and the screen at the same time. And if you're using one of the, one of the uh, screen capture programs that are out there, some of them will even show you where they, you know, if they click the mouse, where does it click? It has like a little circle that pops up really quick. That would be the ideal. In order to do that, usually you will have to have a webcam on whatever uh, laptop you're using. However, not everyone is testing out something on a laptop. Not everyone has a webcam that you can use. I actually have had groups that have used, as you suggested at the beginning of class, their phones to record their participants. That's fine. This is not going to be um, put out as the movie of the week. I'm going to see it. Your fellow students will see it. And they will already know what the requirements are. I don't want you to run out and go and spend money on a video camera or a webcam or anything like that. Try to use what someone in your group already has, unless you're really looking for an excuse. Basically, I want to be able to see what the participant is saying, what they're doing. This is the ideal, but this is not required. Use your phone, 
use, you know, I guess a lot of digital cameras these days have a movie capability. You can use a, you know, a webcam, whatever happens to work. I do suggest you test it out first, though. You don't want to run a participant just to find that you have a big blank screen or you have no sound. All right, any questions? <clears throat> now, this is just another quick example. This is actually someone took a transcript and they pretty much typed it up. So these are some of the you know, some of the notes that they took, they typed them up. You'll see that th something like this happens to be fairly detailed. Yours does not have to be this detailed because notice that they have, you know, whole sentences. Gosh, there's a lot of stuff, stuff on the screen. Hmm, I wonder what I do next. It doesn't have to be that detailed, but this gives you an idea of the types of things that a user may be saying and doing. And you can pull out what are the things that you really should be taking notes on.